hey guys welcome back to other video so if you are new to this channel let me introduce myself so my name is Arish I am currently doing my final MBBS in a government medical college from Tamil Nadu so if you are a pre final medical student the one subject that will frighten you the most will be community medicine not because of its volume it's because of its volatility some students may even find it difficult to approach community medicine so I decided to make this video because I gave my community medicine exam a month before and it really went well in the sense that the question paper was a bit moderate and familiar to me. I could be able to answer every question confidently because I knew what to write for each question and I could be able to revise every topic properly before exams without cramming. And as a student, that itself a huge success for me. I'm not going to worry about my grades because the process is more important rather than the result. So in this video, I'm just going to share okay, how I studied for my community medicine, okay, how I approach community medicine, how I studied each topic and what are the books that I used other than PARC and what are the online resources that I used. So I think this video will be really helpful for you. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do consider subscribing it. So let's get into the video. How I approached community medicine aka social and preventive medicine. The first thing I did was breaking down the topics because community medicine contains lots of big topics such as epidemiology, environment and preventive medicine for Australian gynecology and pediatrics. So what I did was breaking down the big topic into small small topics for example if you take epidemiology you can break that entire lesson into epidemiology and measurements epidemiology and its study methods uh, disinfection disease transmission immunology and if you take preventive medicine for obstetric gynecology and pediatrics you can break that into maternal and child health care indicators of uh, mch growth monitoring and school going children's health adolescent health geriatric health and their related health programs so breaking down these topics really help me to get clarity on each of these things if you sit and complete epidemiology as a whole it will take you days and it will make you frustrated but if you split that entire lesson into small topics and if you try to study and complete it regularly it will ease your preparation so the second thing i did was categorizing and marking down the important topics so once you've done breaking down the topic take your university question bank and mark down all the important questions and categorize each topic based on its weightage and based on the time that you can allocate for each topic for example if you take topics like disaster management biomedical waste management occupational diseases uh, international health screening these are the topics that are very short in theory but has a huge potential to be a hasp in your exam and if you take uh, lessons like environment, epidemiology and preventive medicine for obstetric, gynecology and pediatrics and nutrition, family plannings, these lessons are very vast and moderate in theory and are very high yield. On the other hand, if you take topics like genetics and mental health and uh, medical sciences, they are very short and they will be interesting but not that much very important for exams. So categorize each topic based on its weightage, based on the amount it needed to complete so that you get a clarity on how to approach each set of topics. The next thing I did was analyzing the post year university question papers from the official university website. Most students fail to do this because they will be having a question bank book or the app that provides them the important question. But the importance of analyzing the post year question paper is not to identify the important question but to understand the pattern of questions. If you take and analyze your university question papers, you will understand how the questions were asked in past years. Okay, from what are the topics the most of the questions have been asked? From what are the topics there is a high potential to be asked in a essay? What are the topics that are less important? What are the topics from which there is a sure question every year? So that you can be able to allocate sufficient amount of time for the topics that are highly important and less amount of time for the topics that are less important. It is called the exam oriented approach and always try to apply Pareto's principle which is 80-20 rule in every topics you study. If you don't know what Pareto principle is, I have already made a video on that, please do check it out. It simply means okay 80 percentage of your result comes from the 20 percentage of effort okay everything in the world have this 80 20 ratio uh, even if you take a topic 80 percentage of the important concepts presents only in the 20 percentage of its page how i studied each topics so i'm not a fan of note taking because i am a lazy person but taking notes really helped me to study community medicine in an easy way but one common mistake that most of the students do is they try to make notes on 
everything they read which is time consuming and exhausting try to make notes on a topic that you feel difficult or worst or complicated and if you feel like you can revise certain topics directly from the book without taking notes then go for it even i did the same i took notes for very few topics that are worst and complicated and you can take great notes on topics like nutrition family planning environment and notes can be in the form of anything it can be in the form of mind map it can be in the form of any tables or diagrams because the major goal of note taking is to concise the theory and revising it in a quicker way organizing the answer so don't try to read every single thing and every corner of the textbook which you can't do it but if you are reading the topic for first time and if you are so curious enough you can give a try to read every single line to understand what is given but in the end we all have to present our answers in the exams and we can't write every single point we know in the exam because we will be having a limited amount of time so organize your answer while you are studying the topic itself for example if you are reading a topic ask yourself how you are going to present this topic if it is asked in your exam in a form of essay or a short notes okay what are the subheadings you are going to give what are the tables that you are going to draw what are diagrams you are going to draw and what are the important points that you are going to read and write in the exams so highlight it or make a mind map or make a short note in the same organized way so on further revision of that same topic always revise it in a same organized way so that it will be helpful for you to present the topic in an easy and in a better way most of the student used to organize their answers only at the time of examination which leads to lots of complication so how i studied communicable distress and non communicable distress and health programs to be honest i didn't spend much time on studying communicable diseases except some few topics like dengue malaria tuberculosis and acute diarrheal diseases and respiratory inf infection because i felt like these topics have potential to be asked in an essay and some of these topics are associated with our practical case presentations and health programs so for all the other short and unimportant diseases i made a notes in the form of tabular column which contains all the necessary information for each diseases making your own notes and making a tabular column is the only best way to study communicable diseases in a easy way and fortunately in our university exams tuberculosis was our essay which i read a pretty well if you take non communicable diseases these topics are not given in a better way in pork textbook because they majorly focused on the preventive aspects but they didn't give enough information on pathology or um, clinical features but if any of the non communicable diseases is associated with your practical case presentation and if you want to gain more knowledge on each diseases one best advice i will give is to borrow some textbook like alagappan or davidson from your final years and read those this is like obesity diabetes hypertension from these textbooks it will be really helpful for you you will get a clarity on each topic and it will be really helpful for you in final year too because you have to read these topics again in the final year health program in a pork textbook is complete mess okay it is given in an unstructured and confused manner and you can't read directly from the textbook you have to make your own notes and i am having an instagram page called pure important where i posted on how to read and study health programs in an effective way and in a better way and i have also attached the notes that i have taken for national literacy education program in a structured manner so you can go and check it out and if you really love that post please do follow that page so after doing everything one important aspect that the student should focus is active revision remember the word active revision you have to actively revise those topic at regular interval of time to retain that information for a longer period of time and the best way to do it is by teaching your colleagues or friends okay always use active recall and spaced repetition for everything you read and if you don't know what exactly is this active recall and spaced repetition i have made a video on that so please do go and check it out the books that i used for community medicine so i totally used three books the first one is park which is a bible of community medicine and the second one is uh, there is a book called okay vivek jain it is a mcq type of book and it is a really great book because you can read certain topics like communicable and non communicable diseases health programs and environment in a easy way and the third book is uh, there is a book called uh, 
Falcon's uh, review of social and preventive medicine. It is a concise version of Park textbook. You can find some direct lines taken from the textbook and you can read uh, topics like occupational diseases and family planning and other short topics. It is given in a very much better way. Uh, most importantly, the epidemiological study methods are absolute best in that Falcon's review of um, SPM. So if you want a detailed review and comparison of each textbook, please do mention it in a comment section so that I will make a video of it. The online resources that I used for community medicine, uh, I used online resources especially to study health program. There is an official government portal for health programs and there is another portal called Vikaspedia and they will provide you adequate information on each health programs but you can't completely rely on that but it's pretty good they provide you all the necessary information so why the program was started what are the objectives what are the strategies etc and for studying other topics i watched some youtube videos and i watched marrow lectures only for very few topics which i find uh, difficult because i started my preparation in a very late stage and i didn't have adequate time for watching every lecture videos but as long as i watched those videos it was pretty good so i think i have covered most of the aspects on how to study community medicine and if you are having any doubts or queries please do drop it in a comment section so if you really love this video and if you really find this video helpful please do give me thumbs up and it really take lots of time and effort to make such videos so please do consider subscribing this channel so thanks for watching goodbye wow.